Hello, Lynn. Hello, people trying to see Hamilton. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hamilton. Happy birthday to you. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Oh, of course. I'm a firm believer that Hamilton is one of the most underrated figures in history. That's kind of why I wrote my book. I'm trying to prove to people that Hamilton was the most influential founding father. He has clearer more modern stances on economics, the Constitution, and slave trade. You see, Hamilton tried extensively to boost the shattered American economy after the Revolutionary War. He was a clear-eyed apostle of America's economic future. Me. As I was saying, the Revolutionary War was paid by bonds that the weak government couldn't pay back. Almost one million dollars became worthless. To overcome this, Hamilton proposed many ideas to regain the money's worth so the government could pay lenders back. One of the plans to accomplish this was to have the government assume state's debts. This ensured that lenders would receive their profits. Hamilton also aimed to help the manufacturers by industrializing the country. He noticed that America's reliance on foreign goods was setting the economy back. Exactly. Good job, Lynn. Now, according to economic journalist Phil Davies, Hamilton's most important economic endeavor was his creation of a national bank. The bank was able to stabilize currency and give people access to credit. Hamilton's bank didn't last, however, but it did pave the way for the Federal Reserve System, and his monetary policies and ideas are still being used today. Yes. Yes, he did. He was the one that called the Constitutional Convention, where they wrote the Constitution. While the others didn't really accept Hamilton's new form of government, they were able to compromise. Hamilton was still satisfied with the outcome. That's why he helped write the Federalist Papers, which advocated for the ratification of the Constitution. Many still opposed the Constitution, but Hamilton's radical view of it set him apart from the other founders. Political science professor Carson Holloway said Hamilton led the way for those who favored a broad interpretation of government powers. He saw each level of the federal system as independent, so they can share and divide their powers. Many other founders, especially the Southerners, were in favor of strong state governments. Hamilton realized that what the country needed was a strong central government. That was still limited. For his democratic process to work, this would require checks on the government and the citizens. Through the Federalist Papers, Hamilton was able to explain every aspect of the Constitution and why it would benefit America. Precisely. Do you know what else Hamilton did with the Constitution and economics? He slyly made sure his plans would in some way benefit the slaves. Hamilton was a fierce supporter of the emancipation of slavery, unlike the other famous figures in the revolutionary generation. There are many historians that are cynical of Hamilton's motives, but I'm a firm believer that Hamilton was an unwavering abolitionist who saw emancipation of slavery as an inseparable part of the struggle for freedom. Hamilton's first attempt to rid the nation of slavery was when he and John Lawrence tried to get the s slaves enlisted into the Continental Army. 
In doing so, they would be freed after their service was over. That was the most noticeable thing Hamilton did. Like I said, he was sly. Politician Michael Chan wrote that Hamilton intended his funding system to benefit everyone on the spectrum. He had hoped the economic systems he put in place would slowly abolish slavery. I mean, switching from an agrarian society, so farming, to an industrial society would definitely reduce the need for slavery. Britain and France were perfect examples of that. Most of Hamilton's attempts to abolish slavery were, unfortunately, unsuccessful, but he did manage to make slavery illegal in New York. It's the thought that counts. Oh, no problem. I love spreading knowledge about Hamilton. Goodbye.